Good evening. Welcome to the Ash Wednesday service. Right now, we're going to be um, going through a few things. Uh, first off, I want to say the robe that I'm wearing was a gift to me by Pastor Tiemann. This was given to Pastor Tiemann by his mother when he was in seminary. So he gave it to me, so I'm, I'm proud and uh, proud to wear this uh, for many Ash Wednesdays to come. Um, we have six more to go, but tonight what we're doing and the series we have throughout the whole Lenten series, uh, besides tonight we have six more, is we're doing an interactive sermon. We have characters that are going to be playing different roles, and I will be the narrator through this. So this will be something a little different, and I uh, hope we can have other members of the congregation also sign up to be... Um, the uh, characters as well as we go through uh, the Lenten series right up until Holy Week. And with that announcement, we're going to go ahead and start. Our opening hymn is hymn number 419. Oh, one other thing before we get going. For the ashes, when the ashes are ready and we're going to do the ashes, I'd like everybody in a single file, I will come down and um, put the ashes here and you guys can go out on the outer uh, going back. So we'll do that when that time comes. Opening hymn is hymn number 419, Savior, when in dust to thee. Please rise.
I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is shaking your right hand. 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 The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. Unless the Lord builds the house, their labor is in vain who build it. It is vain that you rise so early and go to bed so late. Children are a heritage from the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is a gift. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. Happy are they all who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house, your children like olive shoots round about your table. The Lord blesses you from Zion, and may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Behold now, bless the Lord, all your servants of the Lord, you that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord. The Lord made heaven and earth, bless the gods of time. Prayer of the day. May we come to this day together as we begin this journey into the season of Lent. Let each of us search our hearts and pray that we can open them to his bitter sufferings for his own sake. Amen. We will now have the imposition of the ashes. You may line up. We will now have the scripture readings. The first reading is from Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, and verses 18 through 25. What then shall we say about Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. In hope, Abraham believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so, you, so shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body which was as good as dead because he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver according to the, concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. But the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him that raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was put to death by our, for our trespasses and raised for our justification, the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Jesus then said to the Jews who had believed in him. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, 
and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are the descendants of Abraham, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How is it that you say you will be made free? And Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not continue in the house forever. The son continues forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my words find no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would not, you would do what Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. Your father Abraham rejoiced when he when he, he was to see my day, he saw it and was glad. The Jews said, then said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. The Sermon Hymn. Upon the hills around do I lift up my longing eyes. O whence have me shall my salvation come? From whence arise? From God the Lord thou come by certain aid. From God the Lord who hath heaven hath made. He will not suffer that thy foot be moved. Safety shall thou be. No careless slumber shall his eyelids close, who keepeth thee. Behold, he sleepeth not, he slumbers not, never, who keepeth Israel in his holy care. Jehovah is himself the keeper, true, the changeless shadow. Jehovah, the defense of thy right hand, himself hath made. And, thy, and thee no sun by day shall ever smite. No moon shall harm thee in the silent night. For every shall be kept my soul from thy sin. Jehovah shall preserve the going out and coming in. Above thee watching him, him who adore shall keep thee henceforth, ye forevermore. We'll now start the sermon. You may be seated. Characters can come up. Let's start with Mark. The mountain we approach today is Mount Moriah. Not as it appears today, but as it would have looked about almost 4,000 years ago. In the days of Abraham, old Abraham blessed by at last his old age with the son of God's promise, Isaac. The road to Mount Moriah very much involves Isaac and the promise of God, which he represents. Sarah, go quickly and make ready three measures of fine meal for our guests. Knead it and make cakes, while I run to herd and find a calf, tender and good, to have prepared for them with curds and milk to set before them that they may eat. Abraham, where is Sarah, your wife? She is in the tent. I will surely return to you in the spring, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. After I have grown old, and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? 
Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you in the spring, and Sarah will have a son. And so it was. The Lord visited Sarah as she had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of the son who was born to him, who Sarah bore him. Isaac. A name that means laughter. God has made laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh over me. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would suckle children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. And there was laughter in the tent of Abraham, as there is so frequently when the promises of God are evident in their keeping. The road to Mount Moriah, therefore, looks for now like such a happy way, punctuated with the laughter of the future that appears bright and so secure. Fear not, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Look toward heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. So shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. After these things, God tested Abraham. Abraham, here I am. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as burnt offering upon one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took his son Isaac, and he cut the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place in which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place far off. Mount Moriah. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. He took in his hand the fire and the knife, so they went, they both of them together. My father. Here I am, my son. Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? God will provide himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together to Mount Moriah to a time of testing. And so we joined them there, old and helpless, possibly like Abraham, aware at last of our mortality, the sober fact that we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. The season of Lent calls us year by year, like Abraham and Isaac, to lay aside our laughter for a while and to come face to face with our mortality, to realize the debt we owe unto our God, the harsh demand which he has every right to claim from us, the sifting of laughter. Mount Moriah is a place from, where, from which we weigh and look back, like Abraham, on blessings undeserved, on laughter granted unexpectedly, and on our, our doubts and fears and disbelief, and where they will might lead. When we come to Mount Moriah, where God leads us for a time of testing, Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Then Abraham put forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Abraham, Abraham, here I am. Do not lay your hand on the, la on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its thorns. And Abraham took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. 
on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And so, as it is the case with every mountaintop experience, we make ready to leave Mount Moriah, the mount of testing. Other mountains loom before us as we go on our Lenten way. It is too early in the journey to observe that an ancient tra uh, tradition holds that is in the future time under another rule. Abraham's Mount of Testing would bear another name, Calvary. It is too soon in our journey to observe that there at Calvary, Abraham's faith and ours would find fulfillment. God will provide himself the lamb for offering, my son. Or is that true, truly the mountain toward which we trust? Keep moving even this early in our Lenten pilgrimage the mountain where we must resort where we, our lives as, as in the life of Abraham. The laughter seems to have been snatched away. When faith is tested almost to the breaking point and we confront the ashes of our own mortality. Abraham believed the Lord and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. So Abraham returned, it says, and Isaac with him to the laughter of the living for a while, and to the tears as well. Sarah's death at last in God's good time, and Isaac's marriage to uh, Rebekah, until Abraham breathed his last and died in, the, in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. But death was different now, and so was life for those who carried on. Because of Mount Moriah, among other stops along the way, a mountaintop assurance on the journey for Abraham and Isaac, and for us as well, of the blessing which we celebrate again this Lent by faith. On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Amen. We will now recite the Apostles' Creed, which we found on page 159. I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in and Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary was suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended, descended into hell. Into hell. On the, the third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the, in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy, Holy Christian, Christian Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life, and life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. We will now have the offering.
Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. Everything that is written of the man, Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spat upon. They will scourge him and kill him. And on the third day, he will rise. Lead us, O Lord, from heaven to Christ, that we may share the life which you have given us in eternity. Amen. Let us recite and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look at you and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.